albeit I use it for any issue, its main focus anyway is on confidence and making the person feel better about themselves. Because as we covered yesterday, that's pretty much the underlying thing behind most things. So, pain control. Again, I still use the CMT session exactly as it is. Might be seeing a bit of a pattern here. Um, the only bit I add in those two sections we mentioned earlier is. is to get them to imagine that in their mind there is a control room. <coughs> and this control room it is where their, their, this is the wording, where their head engineer is. Alright? That's double meaning. It's like the control room of everything would have an engineer, a head engineer, the one who's in charge but also, because it's inside their head, it's the engineer of their head, head engineer, sort of a bit more meaning phrase. And they've got to imagine going into that control room, in a way that feels right for them. And I don't know if you can see levers, or you can see buttons, or you can see dials. But whichever it is, on the count of three, and only on the count of three, when I click my fingers like that, that very moment, that very second, that very instant, that's something I should point out. You, you made a call yesterday, whenever it came to certain things. I always told people when to do it, so they've got an idea of when it's got to be done. And prior to it, I don't just say you can only count to three, this is going to happen. I said, that very moment, that very second, that very instant. Just because I've got conditioned myself to the idea, and allegedly in psychology, Things that are said three times, albeit using different words, but meaning the exact same thing, the repetition is quick it empowers it, makes it more likely to happen. Hence, with like direct suggestions for smoking or weights, not just you no longer want to eat too much, you no longer need, want. Crave or desire. I know that's actually four, but you want at least three. So you know you no longer need one. Crave or desire, sugary or fatty foods. Not just one. At least three words. That's why when I say like your eyes are locked together, your hands are locked together, it's not. Oh, they're just stuck. No, it's almost as if they're locked, glued, welded, cemented. So there's a few things. It's giving them more options to lock, lock, lock their head around. So you get them to imagine being in this control room. On the count of three, I'm going to click my fingers that very moment, that very second, that very instant. I'd like you to imagine the way that feels right for you. You can walk up to the control desk and your head engineer will tell you which is the correct dial, button or lever, it's leaving it up to them, that you need to either press, pull or turn to make that pain that once bothered you in the past, and you'll know what area it is, because I told you, uh, so you can make reference to it, <coughs> to make it almost as if it just disappears. Almost as if it just drops down to a level where it causes you no discomfort whatsoever. That's essentially it, the technique. If they believe, if, if arguably, they believe that it will work. Arguably, if you believe it will work, it will work because you will express that intent will be projected to the client that clearly you're only doing this because you've done it before and it's worked. 
So yes, it is just another way of getting a placebo effect, but it's more specific sounding to the particular thing. And then I brought here glove. I don't know what I've written actually, the way I've spelled that, but glove anesthesia is what it's supposed to say. Um, the spelling's a bit wrong. Now the idea behind this is the well in Trent. Uh, you tell them, you've already established where the pain is, uh, causing the most of an issue, which at the start of the session you refer to as pain, but from the moment you've done a convincer of some nature, you refer to as discomfort from there on in, because the word discomfort is not as emotionally charged as the word pain. Uh, you know, most people, certainly at the level that they're seeking help for it, will not be going, ooh, I'm in a bit of discomfort. No, the more likely to be going, I'll have a lot of pain. So if you can get them to start thinking in terms of the word discomfort, they will already have as a human being a conditioned response within them of what discomfort means and the fact that that is different than what pain means. So if you believe that the verbal suggestion element of all this actually works, then arguably if you are starting the process of anchoring them back to the reactions and feelings of discomfort, which will be lesser than those connected to the word of pain. Does that sort of make sense? Now all these were purely imaginary inside the red. Well, we haven't covered no easy therapy yet, but the head engineers inside the head. Uh, glove anesthesia, the idea is that it's supposed to, through suggestion, uh, make a person feel like their hand is either gone numb, and then they can place their hand wherever it is they need to and transfer that numbness. That's the verbal suggestion, that's the classical standard way of doing it. Some of the schools of thought uh, tell them to imagine that their hand is warming gulp almost, and then to transfer that heat to the area uh, where <coughs> the discomfort was once in the past. Can we stop saying pain at that point? Or what you could do, what you could do, just excuse me one moment, all will become clear. <coughs> Uh, in a few moments, could, could, could you, could, um, has anyone got any water I can see? You unfortunately will not get it back in the glass idea. <laughs> you will not get it back for reasons that will become obvious shortly. Uh, Oops. Now we're just going to 
Roll that up. We bit tired. Like that thing, but into a ball. Are you right left-handed? Right-handed. Place your right hand there. Close your arms. Okay. In fact, we stop them for a moment. And place that on the hand. Close your hand around it. So it's open slightly like that. That's fantastic. Close your eyes. I'm going to tap your wrist. Whenever it won't bother you, worry you, or concern you. But when I tap your wrist in a few moments' time, each time I tap your wrist like that. It's almost as if you can imagine that that foil is getting warmer and warmer and warmer. This is a sign and a signal that as you use your unconscious mind, your unconscious mind can make changes, genuinely occur in reality to you. So you can feel it getting hotter than... <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> the interesting thing is, well, I can actually pick that up and you can feel it's not particularly... Oh, man, is it? So, right, thank you, Albert. <laughs> uh, um, I should just put this in here safely out of the way uh, for reasons that will become clear in a moment. Uh, right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, I think you'll agree if you feel something that's completely normal getting off in your hand, genuinely, to the point where you have to genuinely drop it, yeah? At that very moment, that second, their state of mind will be in a zone where you could then, because they'll open their eyes when they drop it, they'll go, bloody hell, trust me, they will. At that moment, you can then, because the brain is in that stunned, confused, what the hell's gone on state, that, arguably, is that moment where the critical faculty of the brain, the analytical area, the mid-bit, the nightclub bounce that stops you getting in the unconscious is distracting, and you could literally just say to them, SPLIT! Close your eyes! And it will be the quickest rapid induction you've ever come across. Or you could tell them gently to close their eyes and realise that as they use their powers of intelligence, imagination and concentration in the same way, the very moment, the very second I pick up your wrist, uh, your arm on the same side as you just used, you can transfer that power from your mind to your hand like you just did, that made you imagine and experience as rea reality um, the heat, and you can transfer that heat to, and then move the hand to the area, and because they're in that taut state of belief, you've got a mega shortcut to classical glove anaesthesia which is guaranteed to have an effect of convincing them, because... <sighs> right, let's go over here. Because, and you won't find this out in the form of chemicals, I tell you. <laughs> <coughs> because we have what is uh, called Calderone sex test. Okay? Now, this is a, a magic routine that a colleague of mine in Norway, called Caldi Roll Modley, uh, uses in his act, whereby he tells them that, as they hold the foil, uh, that they've got to think about the hottest, wildest sexual adventure they've ever had in their life. So, as they do, obviously, it conjures up images that make them smile, but then suddenly they'll go, ah, it's hot, and he uses it in that context. Now, his contact email is, you might want to make a note of this, but it will also be on the disc or I can give it in the break, is C for Carl, D for dog, R for Rome, magic, which is M-A-G-I-C, at online.no. So, CDR magic at online.no. It will cost you £25 to get a bottle of this. You can't get it in England. That includes airmail delivery. Even if you were to use this in the manner I'm about to explain six, seven times a day, this should last you about a year, one bottle. So it's cheap as chips, really. What you will need, though, when he sends you this, um, is, oh no, there we go. You should then go to the chemist and you purchase a little bottle of Optrex or other eye drops, okay, which you empty out and get rid of. You will then take a glass, it must be a glass, do not use a metal container for reasons that become clear in a few moments, okay? 
and you will open up the bottle that you get supplied and you will squirt some into the glass. Not a lot, just some. You're better off putting too little in and then putting some more in afterwards. You will then take your empty Optrex bottle, or similar, which you'll know it's right when you're on because it's got like a little nozzle at top, and you'll squeeze it together as much as you can, and then you'll put it down so the tip of it touches the liquid and let the air back in slowly, it will suck in the liquid into the little bottle. Because the little bottle is easier to carry around unnoticed, with the lid screwed on, it won't spill out. These are just little important technicalities. If it's in your office, fair enough, you may not bother with that. You may just, before the client arrives, apply the chemical. Now, what time? Oh, we're due for a break, we're short. Yeah, I'm about 15 minutes. Okay, this will take us to about the break time. So, whichever bottle you're using, but I suggest a small one, you can carry it around with you. This is bread company, so if you're out and about and someone says, what do you do when you, 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 you do your elevator spin? Try, you know, if someone asks me what I do, it depends what mood I'm in, where I am, but it should be the elevator speech response, short and sweet, that makes them ask more questions, so you can sell them something. It should be, uh, my usual one is, well, I, I, you know, I just like to magically change people's lives for the better. Which doesn't answer the question, in fact, it leaves it open. Just, what do you mean? Do you do it? And then you've got them in a state of mind for selling them something. But invariably, when you say it's involving the mind, you go, oh, are you like that Darren Brown look, or Paul McKenna, or what? Can you do something here and now? Now, if you've got bolts of steel, you may choose to hypnotise them. Personally, I like to never fail. <laughs> so if you can rip the foil out of someone's cigarette packet, ask someone who's there, and then get someone to hold it, and they feel it go red hot and drop it, they're going to believe you've taken control of their mind. Which is why it's useful to have the small bottle to carry around because you can say, so yeah, I'll just show you some I'm going to get. Just, can you just get some uh, fire out of the sick pack out? I just need a wing. And you can pop to the load. And then go in the cubicle just to make sure nobody sees, you know. What you do, the settle. Now I'm right handy, so. Yeah. You literally put a little drop on the fingertip, a drop on the thumb, and a drop on that next finger there. And then you rub the finger and thumb together like that. So it's on the tips of the fingers. We now give that a bit of a blow. And we just give it about a minute to dry. When it's dried, you will apply another teeny, and I mean, don't press this hard, otherwise you're going to be wasting it. One of those big bottles, as I say, should last you for bloody ages. Just the tiniest little spot. Thumb, finger, finger, rub them together. And let them dry. Do that a couple of minutes before the client arrives. Oh, while they're filling in the questionnaire, they won't know if you're doing it under the desk. You will need then this chemical essentially reacts with water and metal. That's why you only use glasses. Okay. You take, and I get the feeling I may have actually bought, as ridiculous as it sounds. Too much of it on this time. But there you go. Which means it may not work properly, but there, never mind. This is something you're going to have a practice with. If you do put too much on, it actually won't always work. But you dip the foil just a tiny edge. I mean, I'm only dipping, shall we say, half a centimetre. And you don't want it stopping, you want it. Now we verbalise that we're just wanting to make sure that the foil is clean. That's the first <coughs> one for having put water on it. We are then going to rub from the top, because these two fingers and that thumb have got the chemical on. 
We're gonna, we've got the two fingers on one side, the thumb there. We're going to pull off the end along the top, so we've got some water on this now. And then we're going to go systematically, either pulling downwards on the foil or upwards, so that we're covering the foil. Now this is ridiculous, we're saying we're doing that to take the creases out, which is completely illogical when we're about to screw it up into a ball. Now, when you screw it up into the ball, you've got to make sure that you've had a good old contact on both sides. When you practice this, if it doesn't appear to work for you, it will be because you've used too much water. You then screw it up, but make sure it's not too tight. I did put too much on, it's already reacting, I'm getting the powdery chemical out there. But you screw it up so it's about the size of a Malteser, but not too tight, so some air is You give it to the person, you get them to close their hand around it, but open a bit so there's a bit of air, and it will just start getting warmer. Um, and you, you're waffling rubbish with them at this time, but it starts getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and you'll want to drop it in a minute because it gets hotter, yeah? <laughs> yeah? It's guaranteed that is going to happen. The only reason that won't happen is if you use too much water. And I'll be honest, when I started using this, I was dipping the foil fully in the water, bringing it out, and I rung up Carl and I said, Carl, you've sold me, damn it, bloody chemical. <laughs> he said, no, I haven't. I said, seriously, you have? He said, have you applied the water? I said, yeah. He said, have you applied the chemical, right? And uh, that's what happens if you put too much of the chemical on. When you come in contact with the foil, the reaction uh, causes it to go powdery. So it is worth having a bit of a practice because you'll get a sense. I knew that I didn't put too much of it on. One you can have a bit of a play with. But the convincer of that, and that's why we get rid of it in the bin, we're out of the way. Um, hopefully, you can imagine in your mind's eye how powerful a convincer that is that when you've put it into one of them, so you can carry it about, you've got with you any time, any place, anywhere, which without fail, without fail, when you practice and you make sure you don't use too much water, you can use other drinks, but I don't suggest doing. Water's probably best. Totally convinces them that you say words <coughs> and it happens. And in the context of you know, well, any session, it's a mega convincer if you chose to do that at the beginning. But certainly in a pain control situation, I think it's one of the best ways of psychologically getting them in that zone where then you can focus them to believe that the heat that they've managed to generate through their own mind, so they've got no reason to not believe it or resist it because they've genuinely felt it, can now be, through the power of their mind, transferred to wherever. And that's a sign and a signal that the discomfort instantly decreases. Does that make sense? Let's have a 10-minute break, because uh, the one thing I haven't got here, if you're doing this in your office, is um, if you're doing it out and about, you can carry on uh, having a drink, but when you get a chance, you go to the loo, and you just wash your fingers. In the office, you just have a damp cloth, just to get it off. It doesn't have any effect on you, you just make sure you don't have any cuts on your fingers, then you should be fine. Uh, so yeah, see you in 10 minutes.